que son fue que God still answers prayers. All righty, Laura. <laughs> Did not know this flower you were 
When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave unto his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus therefore being weary from his journey, and thus on the well, set on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Want you to look back for just one moment with me to the fourth verse, and I want you to underline the word needs. Needs. You say, well, I've got that underlined in my Bible. That's good. But there are some things here that I don't think that many of us have seen, especially not me. Now, when it says needs, it's plural. It's not singular. It means that there is more than one need. Now, we spend our lives, and I have, of saying, you know, I need a new pair of shoes. I need a new dress. I don't. I need a new car. I need a new house. So we, we basically circle our lives around our needs. First of all, God knows what you need. Amen. And I've never seen this before. Jesus said that he had some needs. Now, I didn't know that Jesus ever needed anything. Did you? I never did. I thought him being the son of God that he had everything that he needed. But there was some needs. Now Christ was in heaven with God, with the Holy Spirit. And he must make his journey from heaven down to this earth for one purpose and one reason. That he could be the savior of the world, the savior of my soul, your souls, for the entire populace of the entire world. So he said that he had a need to come from heaven to this earth. The second need that he had, that he needed not only in his transfer, but he needed a fleshly body. So the Spirit of God took the seed of God, planted it into the womb of Mary, which was a virgin. Nine months later, he was born. So now we start to see his needs being met. His need, he needed to come from heaven to earth. He needed to be born with a fleshly body. Now notice some things about his birth. He was God inside. He was the Holy Spirit inside, but outwardly he was a man. And the reason that he needed to be born this way is so that he could know our need in our life. He had to have a fleshly body. Now he had an earthly father that the world recognized. His name was Joseph. And why in the world did God choose Joseph to be recognized as his earthly father? Well the scriptures tell us that he must have the lineage of David. So if in Matthew the you'll find the lineage of David where it starts with David and it goes all the way to Joseph. But in that verse it says that Mary, before it mentions Joseph, it says Mary was the mother of Jesus. So Jesus had a need to come from heaven to be born of flesh so that he would know our needs. And then he had a need to be baptized. The world didn't know him. So John the Baptist didn't know him. But God told John, he said, the one that you see the Spirit descending upon and remaining upon, this is the one that's preferred before you. So he had a need to be baptized. After he was baptized, the dove made his uh, ascension from heaven. He descended from heaven and he remained upon him. And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The next day after Jesus baptized, was baptized of John, John saw him coming and he said, Behold the Lamb of God 
which taketh away the sin of the world. And then Jesus not only needed to be baptized, he needed to be tempted. Why would he need to be tempted? Well, before his temptation, he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Why? Because he knew he was going against the power of Satan. So he fasted, and then Satan tempted him in three ways. What was the first one? Matthew 4. What was it? Turn the stones into bread. Jesus was hungry after 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil said, If you be the Son of God, then turn these stones into bread. Now, how did Jesus defeat Satan? Scripture. By the Word of God, it is written. What was the second temptation? has to do with a pinnacle. If, if, cast yourself down because it says that if you, um, the angels will keep you from Yeah, Yeah. How did Jesus defeat him? The scripture, the word of God, it is written. What was the third temptation? He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said, if you bow down to me, I'll give them to you. What did Jesus say? Huh? I shall worship the Lord thy God and him only. Ah, what did he say? Get behind me, Satan. For it is written. Now go. You worship the Lord thy God and him only. Yeah. Now, boy, this is a good Bible class. Yeah. Now, you're the strangest preacher I ever heard. Yeah, but you learn, don't you? Yeah. Quiz, test, understanding. Now, if we're going to defeat Satan, the only way we'll defeat him is by the Word of God. That's why it's important to read it. How many of you memorize a verse every week? How many of you memorize a verse every month? You ain't got much power, have you? We know how to fish, right bait, right hook, shoot a gun, disassemble the symbol, oil. I know how to drive a hunt rod. I know how to keep a car clean. But if we don't commit to memory the Word of God, we go out defenseless. That's a good place. Now, if you said amen, you're going to start memorizing <laughs> verse number <every> day. <laughs> every week, will you commit to it? Every week, let me see your hands. All right. Now you're going to get some power. Now you're going to have some power. So Jesus had power, even though that he was God made manifest in the flesh, Jesus had the power, and the power was the word of God to bring defeat unto Satan. Now he not only had to uh, need of being temptation, but he had a need of miracles. Why did he have a need of miracles? I thought y'all knew this. He had to prove or show to the world that he was not only man, but he was a supernatural man. He was God. That's why he could raise the dead, touch the blinded eyes, make the deaf speak, hear, make the man with the withered hand hold. He could do all these things. He not only had need of that, but he had need of parables. This is introduction now. It's not the message. This is introduction. Why did he need to do parables? People like us could Y'all gonna have to talk loud to me. I'm hard here. I know too. All right. He took earthly things to show us of heavenly things so that we could have an understanding. He had a need. Y'all knew all about these needs, did you? <laughs> Man, when God showed me that, that's shouting ground. 
Now he had a need to suffer. Tell me about his suffering. Garden of Gethsemane. You remember that? He prayed until his sweat became a great drops of blood. He was getting ready. He had need to go to the cross. He had need to shed his blood. He had need to give his life. He had need to be resurrected from the dead. Then he had a need to leave this world and go back to the Father. Why did he need? He needed that so that he might send the Holy Spirit to live within us. So when you get saved, God comes within us. That's a bunch of needs Jesus had, didn't he? Those were personal needs. Now his main need was what? To do the will of the Father. That's all. And that was the only way that God could get us to heaven and give, forgive our sins and get us in the presence of the Lord. Now that's good stuff. I don't care who you are. That's good stuff. So Jesus says that he had needs. The second thing I want you to see about this verse, he must needs go through Samaria to a little town called Sychar. Now the reason that he had a need to go to Samaria is because somebody was there that needed him. Bunch of persons next to you. Don't you go sleep all night. <laughs> Jesus said, I got a need to go to Samaria because there was somebody that was in need that was there. Now, what about your needs? The one that was there that needed him was a woman that had problems. Got any problems? Her problem was man problems. You got any man problems? You got any woman problems? Husband problems? Wife problems? Come on. That's called you by yourself. <laughs> You had. <coughs> I don't have any because my wife's perfect and I'm perfect. <laughs> Ooh, I wish that was so. We almost are because we're getting closer to get a new glorified body than any other time. Now, he had a need to go because there was somebody there that needed him. And he knew where to go. Somebody needed him. And he knew where that somebody was at. Now it's no accident that you're here today. You said, well, I'm here because my kids got me up and said we need to go to church. My daughter called me. My son called me. You're here because there is a need in your life. Jesus said, I have a need. Now, he's, we're going to see him meet the needs that are in the Scripture. Now, God is always on time. He is never late. This woman couldn't keep a husband. This woman was had five of them, and she is shacking up with somebody that wasn't her husband. I think she's a harlot. I think she went from man to man to man. And I'm going to show you in a minute why that I believe that. So when Jesus came to Samaria, he sat down by the well of Jacob. And when he was sitting there, it, that of the Samaritan woman came along. Now notice Jesus always knows how to start a conversation. 
Jesus always knows in the midst of a conversation that he can bring us to the place that he can speak to us. So here comes a Samaritan woman. She comes to draw water. And Jesus said, how about drawing me a little bit? I'm thirsty. I need something to drink. You remember why I said that Jesus taught in parables? Earthly things teaches about heavenly things. So Jesus said, I need something to drink. And she looked at him like he was stupid. And she said, well, if you come here to drink, you don't have anything to drink out of. This well is from our father Jacob, and it's a deep well. Jacob drank there. His sheep, his herd, his cattle, everybody's drank at this place. And you don't have anything to draw with. Isn't it strange that we've spent all of our lives trying to get something that we don't have any source of getting to? Spend all of our lives trying to do something that we want, trying to get something that we want, and all we're wanting is not what can do us any good. So this woman was having a problem. Then I want you to look into the 14th verse. Let's look back at the 10th verse. This is the answer Jesus gave unto her. If thou knewest the gift of God, just stop. If thou knewest the gift of God, who, what is, who is the gift of God? Jesus. She thought he was there. She did not recognize him. She did not know him. You know, it's strange if people come to, the ch come to church all their lives and still don't recognize who Christ is, who God is, their need in their life of being saved and being different. She didn't recognize. If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. The first thing he said, I'm thirsty, give me to drink. She said, you don't have anything to draw with. Jesus said, if you'd known the gift of God, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. She thought she needed physical water, fleshly water. In order to sustain the flesh, we need water. <coughs> I can remember cutting tobacco years ago, and I'd get so hot, and I would get so thirsty, and I couldn't hardly wait to get over to the water jug. Why? That was my flesh. That was the... The inner part of me, that's all I had, a thirst. But Jesus said, if you had known the gift of God, if you had known me, then you would have asked me and I would have given you living water. I want you to look down to the 13th verse. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Now, I want you to understand that thirst is not only a physical thirst, but it's a spiritual thirst understand this. Do you, have you ever, and do you feel like there's something missing in your life? Do you? I can remember Mike coming to the house and he said, I'm missing something in my life. I'm missing something. Well, what is that something? I want to show you. Back in the book of Genesis, God created man in his image. Man was made to have what with God? Fellowship with God. Man was made to talk with God, walk with God, eat with God, and live with God. But sin interrupted the fellowship with God. When Adam and Eve sinned, where did God go? Where did Adam go? Separation, departure. Now ever since that time, God has been trying and God has been working to get us back into fellowship again. Let me ask you a question. Have you and your wife, 
you and your husband ever had a falling out? What'd you do? There was a break in the park. You wasn't kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy, feely, feely, come here. Get away from me. Don't you talk to me. I've heard from you all I want to hear. Shut your mouth now. Am I getting good? Yes. Getting down where you live? Yes. So there's a departure. In order to come back together, there's got to be some repentance. Do you ever find it hard to say, forgive me, I'm sorry? How are you ever going to get saved? Repentance. How are you ever going to make it right with your husband or wife and children and friends? Repentance. That's good stuff. Amen. So, I, I've told you this, I think. Barbara and I, when we were first married, we got into it. We went to bed that night, and I lay on my side and pulled the mattress up and put my arm under it and laid on it so that I would not turn over in my sleep and touch her. <laughs> you remember that, Miss Barbara? Yeah. Didn't want to touch her! <laughs> Stay on your side of the bed. <coughs> Leave me alone. <coughs> you know what that was? Cry. You ever sleep on the couch? You ever make him sleep on the couch? Sleep in the floor? Sleep in the car? Go back to his mama's house? Have you ever gone back to your mama's house? <laughs> Ladies, have you ever gone? Men, have you ever gone? <coughs> this is awful. It, I said, Lord, I didn't know you had a need. He said, I've got a need, and if I've got a need, then you've got a need. Everybody's got a need. And the need that we think we got's not the need that we need. <coughs> that is good, what? <laughs> so our needs are different. 14th verse. But whosoever drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. So sin made man depart from God. And what man's been looking for all these years is to get back in fellowship with God. You got a fleshly body and you got a soul. And the only thing in this world that's ever going to satisfy your soul is God. The only thing that's ever going to bring peace and joy and happiness to your life is God. And without God, you're going to be one that stays blow-jawed and pooch-lipped all the time. You're going to be the one that's just standing on the outside looking in. You ever drive by people's houses and say, boy, isn't that a beautiful home? They must be so happy. I'll guarantee you they're fussing, fighting, and growling just like you are in your shack. Flesh, blood, and bone. And you think because they give the outward appearance of something that they're happy? No. There's got to be a need. A need in their life. Jesus had one and we have one. Jesus said, But whosoever drink of this water that I give him, he shall never thirst, but the water that I give him, him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now I want you to notice the difference in how many of us ever had a well to go dry or have heard of wells going dry? You can drop your bucket, but you get nothing. Now Jesus said, my well is living water. Living water. And he says, this well is eternal life. 
So when, if she will accept what Jesus has given her, she will inherit, she will have the living water, which is eternal life, which is being born again of the Spirit of God, where you can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So that's a pretty good need. Jesus had a need. This woman had a need. His need was to go where she was at so that he could meet her need. I'm so glad he found me. I've heard this testimony all my life. When I found Jesus, you didn't find him because he never was lost. It was him that came looking for you. He found you. You didn't find him, didn't have a thing to do with it. He found you. Because he had needs, he met those needs, we have needs, he's going to meet those needs that this lady had. That's when he told her she had, he had, she had five husbands, lived with one that wasn't her husband. And the 21st verse, and Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me. Don't believe what you've heard. Don't believe what you've seen. Don't believe what you've believed all these lives. Believe me. What in the world does he mean? In the verses prior to that, she said, we know that there's one coming called the Christ, the Messiah. She said, in these mountains, we have worshipped God. But you Jews say, in Jerusalem is a place to worship God. But Jesus said, believe me when I tell you, not only in these mountains, not only in Jerusalem, but for the entire world. What's he for? Tell us about it. He's saying that God, one day, we will worship him in spirit and in truth. The spirit is the Holy Ghost. The truth is Jesus Christ. If I'm going to worship God, first of all, I must be born again. The Spirit of God comes to live in me. Then what do I do? I worship God through Jesus Christ. He's our only entrance into heaven, our only entrance where we get some peace of God in our lives. 24th verse. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. This lady said, we know that Jesus is coming. We know that he's the Christ. We know that he'll tell us all things. 26 verse. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Man. Now she comes face to face. He's telling her, I'm Christ. I'm Jesus. I'm not Christ. I'm not Jesus, just a messenger. Just someone trying to tell you and to show you the way to the cross. Then in the 32nd verse, when the disciples came back, they had been to town to get some groceries. When they came back, uh, they was wondering if Jesus had, somebody had given Jesus something to eat. And Jesus said, my meat is to do, the, uh, my meat is to, I have meat to eat that you know not of. And that meat was, 34th verse, uh, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish the work. Now the next thing that happened, it says that this woman left. She left the well of Jacob. She came there for water. <coughs> Jesus told her about living water. There's something that she left at the well. And what was it? Her water pot. What she came with, she left. What she thought she wanted, she didn't need. I promise you, I promise you, by the word of God, you might think you need all these things in your life. But, he says, he has something that you really have need of. So she left the 
water pot. And she went where? Back to Sidon. Why? What was there? People. Now when she went back to Sychar, who did she talk to? Men. Men. Didn't talk to any women. I told you she had a problem. <laughs> she didn't know any women. She might have known some, but they didn't want to know her. <laughs> Have you ever said, boy, you better watch that old gal? <laughs> I've seen the way she's looking at him. You better not go over there. You better not speak to her. She's on the loose. So she gathered all the fellas together and said, come here, boys, I want to tell you something. I met a man that told me all that I had done. Now can you imagine coming up to a stranger and him saying, hey, you've been married five times, shacked up with somebody that you're not married to now? <coughs> That's tough stuff. Then the Bible said there was many that believed because of her testimony. You can win people to the Lord with your testimony. You say, I don't have one. Well, you've never been saved. Well, I'm saved, preacher, but I don't, you don't have to go to church to be saved. Did it get you? <laughs> no, you can get saved under the shade tree. But I promise you this, if you got saved, you'll want to go to the house of God. It will become number one priority in your life. Everything else will become secular. Everything else will take a back seat. Man, I used to think come the weekend they couldn't have a time if Crow wasn't there. I used to think that I, that I couldn't exist unless I was dancing and drinking and hooping and hollering and fighting. That was a good time. But when I got saved, I found out I had no desire to go back to do those things. You say, Crow, I'm saved, but I'm still well, I'm wanting to do those things. Let me tell you something about saving salvation. He said, old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Amen. You said, well, if I was like you, I couldn't do nothing. I do everything I want to do. There's, no, there's nothing that I do that I don't want to do. Don't you like being happy? Amen. Don't you like having joy? Amen. Don't you like having a little money in your pocket? Well, that ain't anyone in my pocket. You're here this morning, ain't you? You had gas money. You had car money. You had this. Who, where did it come from? Came from God. He owns it all. He gave it all. Amen. He is our Father. He's not going to see us be neglected. So Jesus had a need. The woman had a need. He knew where she was at that had a need. And so he went there and met her need. She left her water pot and she went back and talked to the men, but she was different this time when she talked to the men. She didn't say, come here, big boy. She didn't say, come on over to my house, honey. Come here, I've got something I want to talk to you about. She said, I met a man. He didn't give me money. He didn't propose. He didn't ask me to marry. He didn't want to shack up with me. I met a man who told me all things. Have you ever come to church and you feel like a preacher is preaching to you? Do you feel like that every eyeball in the house is looking at you? I've been there. 
I've sometimes I thought I might as well just go on and send a red flag up, hold both hands up and say, Hush, you got me. Leave me alone. You tore all the hide off of me. But I realized something. That man didn't know me. He didn't know what was going on in my life. And yet he was speaking directly to me. Why? Because I was guilty. And the word of God will always bring our guilt to mind. Since I've been here, I've had people walk out and say, you better follow me around. <laughs> Somebody's been telling you what I've been doing. Who told you that? I don't even know what they're talking about. Have no earthly idea what they're talking about. God's able, you're guilty. When you're guilty, God's Holy Spirit will bring that guilt to mind and you know it. Now what are you going to do with it? Man, I can't hardly wait to get out here because I'm not coming back anymore. <laughs> Live like the devil. But you still got a need. And the need's Christ. And nothing will ever get that need filled in your life until it's brought back together again. Adam and Eve and sin separated it. But the cross and blood and the resurrection brought it back together again when we accept him as our personal Savior. <coughs> that is good. I wish to preach it when I had been growing up. I wish somebody had preached this to me when I was sitting in the pew. When I was young and went to church, I was about <coughs> you know what they preached about? Smoking, drinking, cussing, and laying out of church. Every Sunday, I don't care where they read their text, that's what was preached. And I thought, my Lord, fella, get off that. I know what I'm doing wrong. What I didn't know, I didn't know what to do about it. Because nobody ever told me that I didn't have to live that way. Boy, I stayed cut up all the time. Every time I'd go in there, the preacher would ring my jaws. But he didn't give me a solution. He didn't tell me how I could get out of the mess I was in. I didn't like where I was at, but I had to stay where I was at because nobody ever told me there was a lifeline. Are you still out there? You said in there. And that's why I vowed to God. I will do my dead level best through the Spirit and the Word of God to teach and to preach that a child can understand it. <coughs> God's been good to me. How many of you has ever been able to preach at a Rotary Club? I have. Kiwanis. I have. Grade school. I have. High school. I have. <laughs> College. I have. God's been good to me. You say, well, you can't go into those pre places and preach. You better believe it. It was back in the 70s. <laughs> I don't know if I to get by with that or not. Just don't give me a chance. I tried it one time. God's been good. Throw a wife life. I feel with all my heart there's somebody here today. Somebody here today that's struggling so with their lives. They've got all kinds of trouble and they don't want to be in that trouble, but they don't know how to get out of that trouble. And I don't want you to leave here today without knowing you don't have to stay in the position that you're in. There is another way. There is relief. All right. Jesus had a need. You thought I was through with that, but I'm not. He had a need to leave his disciples. The ones that he had handpicked. He had a need to choose them. He had a need to choose one of them that was a devil. Why? Because he had a need to be betrayed into the hands of sinful men. That was the only way Jesus was going to get to the cross is for
for the Roman soldiers to come and get him and take him to the Sanhedrin court and then say, crucify him away with him. You say, I didn't know there's that many needs in that. I didn't either. There's a bunch of needs. All right, winding up. We have a need. Talk to me. What's your need? Oh, I have a need to be more spiritual. Baloney. Oh, I have a need to be closer to God. Baloney. I remember that I was preaching overseas one time with an interpreter, French interpreter. And if you've never preached with an interpreter or been around one, but it's something. You had to get to the sink. <coughs> There's a rhythm like playing a piano. And so when I preach, you'll have to say a few words and let him hit it a lick. And it gets going back and forth for long, you like it. And so while I was preaching, going along, it, something came across and I said, baloney! <laughs> and so this fella, he started interpreting and he said, huh? <laughs> he didn't know what baloney was, didn't know what baloney meant. And I had a hard time searching for another word of, I said, it's just foolishness. Ah, he said. I don't know what he told them, but he told them something. He went right down the line. So there was a need. There was a need. And Jesus not only needed to get to the cross, but he needed to go back to heaven. He needed to go back to the angels. He needed to be seated by the right hand of God. And he needed to send the Holy Spirit of God. And he did send it on the day of Pentecost. 120 was there when Peter said, Ye men and brethren, this is what was spoken of by Joel the prophet. Whew. Church gave birth. Church started. And from there she's been on from ever and ever. So our need is number <clears throat> one, the Father, to be in him. The only way we can get to the Father is through Christ. We've got to believe that He died, resurrected, and ascended into heaven and embrace that. Take that. Receive that. Ask Him to come into your lives. There are so many that are riding along when they was 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, came to an altar and said, All right, I feel better now. And have believed all their life that they're saved. Let me ask you, if you got <coughs> saved, where's the evidence? <coughs> the evidence is when you get saved, you will follow after God. You will want to be with God's people. Now, let me ask you, had you rather be here this morning? than the best whiskey bar in the country. Had you rather be here this morning than the best whorehouse in the country. Had you rather be here this morning than in the best crack house in the country. I had. Because I'm enjoying God and my personal relationship. So our need, I said he had a need. This woman had a need. So our need is his need. And his need is the Father's need. So his need is our need, and his need is the Father's need, and the Father's need is the Holy Spirit's need. You had locked up on me, have you? Don't you shut down. So your need. I lived 24 years without God. Did everything I was big enough to do and a lot more. Things that I pray to God that nobody will ever find out about. They found out about too many already. Got to raise two girls. When we came back to the county, Everybody started telling the girls what their daddy used to do. And they thought that I had kept something good from them. Because sin was so glorified. And I glorified it a lot. You say, how would you do that? All of us get together.
together and we said, you remember when we got so <laughs> drunk, boys, it's out. Jamie? You ever say, hey, you remember that old gal I used to go with? Woo, she is ugly. <laughs> you remember that old guy I used to go out? He was no good, but I didn't care.
Satan may reach out and have one second to go in your life and that's all you've got and he is going to get you but pick the ball up for Jesus and take off like a streak. Amen. Amen. It'll lead you somewhere. You'll go somewhere. You'll be somebody. Not in this world but in heaven and in the glory of God. I've never been much on this earth. In fact, little. In fact, nothing. But I am a child of God. <coughs> that means everything. Amen. Stand with me. Bow your feet.